So you're excited, you're over the moon, and you're overwhelmed. Your boyfriend, whom you have been wanting for a long time to propose to you, finally did. He finally got down one knee, you're about to get a new last name, and you have a wedding to plan. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is John and I'm a full-time engineer. Outside of doing engineering work, I'm also a part-time photographer and videographer. I shoot a lot of weddings and portrait sessions. In this video today, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what happens after the big question. So you're excited, you're over the moon, and you're overwhelmed. Your boyfriend, whom you have been wanting for a long time to propose to you, finally did. He finally got down on one knee, you're about to get a new last name, and you have a wedding to plan. It's an amazing journey and I can tell you that from experience. My wife and I have been married for going on four years now and it's one of the best decisions I ever made. It's not always sunshine or rainbow, I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's been worth it every second of the way. So right now there are a billion things that are going through your mind right after you said yes and things are starting to sink in. You're about to get married. There are a lot to do. There are a lot to plan. There's things such as, what do you do? What do you book first? Who's gonna be your maid of honor? Maybe you already know that. Who's gonna do your catering? Who's gonna do your flowers? There's just so many decisions to make. I have been around the wedding scene for a while and I've been shooting wedding videos and photos for a little over three years now. And I've been around it enough to know that there are a lot of things that you have to make decisions on. And I'm here to give you some recommendations on what you should do first. First thing first, you need to decide on a date, whether you want the spring, the summer, or the fall, maybe the winter. All of that will depend on your preference, but you need to date because obviously without a date, you can't make any other decisions like booking a venue, booking a caterer, booking a photographer, booking a videographer, booking a, an officiant. Without that one date, you can't really move forward. Once you've found your date, the second thing I would do is to find a venue. Whether it's your dream venue that you've been wanting to for a long time, make sure the date's available, or it's where your parents got married and you want to get married there, or it's a backyard wedding that you want to do, make that decision. Make sure that the venue can do everything that you want. If it's a ceremony inside, ceremony outside. Reception inside, reception outside. Cocktail hours inside, cocktail hours outside. There's so many combinations of that, but once you make that decision, once you have that figured out, the next thing I would do, the third thing, and I think it's the third most important thing, is to figure out and to book a photographer and a videographer. Not a caterer, not flowers, not cake, not a band, but a photographer or a videographer. I have gotten inquiries upon inquiries this year and I had to turn down weddings after weddings. I have said no to about 10 to 15 weddings by now and it's only mid-year for the main reason that the bride waited so long to book a videographer or a photographer, she waited to the very end to see that there's room in her budget to do that. And I think that's just a little backwards. I'm not telling you this so you can book me as your photographer or videographer, although I do would love to shoot your wedding because I think that would be so much fun. I'm telling you this because I've seen it over and over and over again and I think it's a mistake. Why? So you're gonna go and plan this awesome wedding, most beautiful wedding, just exactly the way you imagined it. And then you don't have memories of it captured, you don't have images, you don't have videos, you don't have the best version captured for you to reflect upon. Trust me when I say this, on your wedding day, things would just fly by. You spent months and months and months trying to design and make this wedding of your dream come to reality. And on the day off, there's gonna be so many things going on that your mind will just be flying. You're there, the nerves are flowing, you're about to see your husband, you're about to walk down the aisle, and you got so many other things in your mind. Is the caterer there? Is the um, flowers there? Is the band there? and you're just not gonna have time to remember all of this and take it all in. So that's why you need somebody there to document the day for you, whether it's in stills and or video, so that once everything's settled, you're married, you're home from your honeymoon, you have something to look back upon and remember the day and cherish it. And in five years, when you're sitting there celebrating your anniversary, you could watch a video with your husband or you can pull out the album and look at it and say, oh look, we were just kids at that time. What you really don't want to do is cheap out on a photographer or a videographer because they will not do it justice to capture the day as you imagined it. A lot of people out here would say, oh look, here's my cousin Susie. He, she's there with her iPhone, she can capture the day. Yes, she can. She can, absolutely can. And she might do a wonderful job at it, but she will not be as good as a professional photographer and or videographer doing it. 
Trust me, I'm telling you that from experience. You're gonna spend all this money getting the most beautiful flower bouquets, you're gonna get the most beautiful cake, and then you have no memories of it, or you have an iPhone picture of it, it just will not do it justice. So why are wedding photographer and videographers so expensive? It's because of years and years of experience. And I'm not talking about myself, kinda, I am. I'm three years in, there are people who spent 10 years. I shot a wedding with a girl here recently who spent the last 10 years doing weddings and that's all she did. And so there are years and years and years of experience that she knows what to do. When you look at the lighting condition, if it's sunny, if it's cloudy, what do you do there? If there's shades, what do you do there? What is the best way to capture your profile the best you can? How to add movements into the picture? How to make the lake behind you just pop? We spent years and years and years learning, gaining experience in order to be able to do that on the fly. The gear that we buy are expensive. The camera that I'm shooting this on now with the lens is roughly $5,000. The tripod that it's sitting on is expensive. The light that I have up here to capture me is expensive. The gimbal that you're seeing right there is expensive. The gear that I have over here to edit your wedding videos or photos is expensive. So all those are business operation costs that why it makes it so expensive, but it allows us to deliver the best quality, the highest quality. So then some people will say, well, I'll just go out and buy the nicest camera. Yeah, you can, but you can't replace experience. What I'm saying is the gear is what we use to make our job easier to capture your day the best as possibly can. And because of that, we're expensive. Plus, we're running a business. Believe it or not, I love shooting weddings. I love being there watching the bride and groom get married. I love watching you guys walk down the aisle, do your kiss, celebrate your family. But I'm also there because I'm running a business. I'm there to make a living. I'm there to work and earn money for my family. So, we would like to be paid. Saying all of that, in my opinion, the first call you need to make after you get engaged is a date. You need to settle on a date. What is your favorite time to get married? If it's the spring, it's cool the weather, flowers are blooming. If it's the fall, the leaves are turning colors and that's just beautiful. If it's the winter, you get this cool weather. It's up to you. The second call you need to make is for a venue. Figure out where you want to get married. The third call and third most important call is for a photographer and a videographer and I recommend both. Don't go and spend twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on a nice venue, the best food, the nicest flowers and have no memories of it captured. And maybe that's who you are. You want to live in the moment, spend that money, and you don't worry about it later. But for me, I want something to look back on and say, look what we did on our wedding day. Look, look at this that we ordered. Look at that. Look at this uncle. Look at that uncle. Look at this grandparent that's there. The things that you spend the money on, although very important, the filmed and the stills is what you will have for years and years to come to reflect upon. My wife and I still occasionally look at our wedding albums and we have it hung up in our house to look back and say, oh look, you remember that day we got married? You remember how cold it was because she had a jacket on? You remember how windy it was because her hair was flowing? You remember this person and that person was there to see us? We should look at those and reflect upon those. You know, as our family members and friend comes and go because we age and we die, Memories is what we have to, to, to remember them by and, and videos and photos are some of those ways to capture the memories. A story I would tell you is when my wife and I were getting married, we, she, her family booked a photographer, really nice photographer and she was one of the reasons that kind of inspired me to walk down this path. But we tried to save money and we didn't book a videographer and we wish we did. I want to make a video one day and explain why you need a photographer and a videographer and that should be coming here shortly. So anyways, it's your money. Do what you wish. That was just my recommendation to you. If you're new here, I'm glad you're here. If you've been here before, thank you so much and I hope you subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.